1984, the glacier was down there 11 miles away. And today, it's back here, receded 11 miles. James often says to, to make a good photograph, you have to fall in love with the subject. And what we were trying to do in the film was to capture and, and convey James falling in love with the ice. And that, that always seemed to be a big challenge because it is this inanimate object that's literally cold and icy. And getting an audience to feel that resonance and that connection with this inanimate object was somewhat difficult. 25 years ago, I thought that maybe there was a lot of hyperbole around this. I thought that the science was based on computer models, which I knew at the time were relatively sketchy. Computer models are quite good now. Um, but also, like almost everybody else on this planet, back then, it never occurred to me that humans were capable of altering the basic physics and chemistry of the planet. It's starting, Adam. I think, Adam, it's starting, right? Look at that. Look at the whole thing. There's a juxtaposition of emotions that you feel sometimes. And when you're out there with the camera, you're really excited to capture that. And you want that to happen so that you can record it and document it. But when you look back at the footage, you realize how horrific the story is and what it's actually telling. If you can see what's called the trim line, it's the high water mark of the glacier in 1984. That vertical change is the height of the Empire State Building. We have a story that's fundamentally irrefutable. We are the guys that went out there, yeah. risked our lives, put our feet on the ground, peered into the unknown, and we brought back the visual evidence. It's not the nicest environment for technology. I do not want to go any lower than this. It's just bottomless. I'm going out here on this broken fin, and I assume it won't collapse.